example three, what we're going to go over is um, equivalent rational expression. So an equivalent rational expression is just one that's the same as the previous one. So you can either multiply the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, or you can divide the top and the bottom by the same thing. Now sometimes it's easier to multiply if there's nothing common to the top and the bottom, correct? So we're going to look at a fraction first because rationals follow fraction rules. So write a rational expression that's equivalent to 8 over 12. So what we could do is we could divide the top and the bottom by both by 4. So we could go 8 over 12. We could divide this by 4, divide by 4. And we get 8 divided by 4, which is 2, over 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Now, 2 thirds is equivalent to 8 twelfths. It's like when you were in elementary school and they would take a piece of pizza and they cut it into pieces, and they take each of those pieces and cut them into more pieces, and they'd show you that um, if you had a circle, like a pizza like this, and this was shaded, you had 2 out of 4. But then they went in and they were like, now I cut each piece in half. And so now I would eat 4 out of 8. They're equivalent fractions. That's what you did in elementary school. The same thing, but now we're going to deal with variables. So I can divide the top and the bottom by the same thing to get an equivalence. Or I can multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. So I'm going to multiply them both by 2. The closed dots mean multiply. And I use closed dots way more than I use the actual multiplication symbol because the multiplication symbol looks like an X and therefore gets complicated when you have Xs. So 8 times 2 is 16 over 24 times 2, or 12 times 2, which is 24. So 16 over 24 is equivalent to 2 over 3, is equivalent to 8 over 12. They're all the same fraction, just written differently. So B. Write a rational expression that's equivalent to 4x squared plus 8x over 4x. So let's look at it this way. What could we take out of both of them? Yeah. yeah. No, equivalent isn't lowest terms. Equivalent just means the same fraction. Next, we're going to do simplifying, and simplifying means lowest terms. So then you would have to divide. Yeah. So if it said simplify, you'd have to divide. But because it says equivalent, you can multiply. What can we take out of all three of these? Yeah. 4x. So I could make an equivalent by going 4x squared plus 8x over 4x and dividing both the top by 4x and the bottom by 4x. On the top, I get 4x squared divided by 4x, which is x, plus sign bless you, 8x divided by 4x, which is 2, and then on the bottom you get 4x divided by 4x, which is 0, 1. Do I have to write a 1 if it's in the denominator? No, then that would mean I'd have to write like 4 as 4 over 1 all the time, right? So if you have a 1 in the denominator, you don't have to write it, but if you have a 1 in the numerator, you have to. So that's one equivalent, or I could say, 4x squared plus 8x over 4x. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. I used 2 on both examples. Does it always have to be 2? No. It could be an x. I could multiply them all both by an x, too. So I would get 8x squared plus 16x over 8x. So this is equivalent to this, is equivalent to that. They're all the same. Now it wants me to state the NPVs, bless you. So if you have an 8x in the denominator, that's what you're going to state NPVs for. So you have an 8 and an x in the bottom. Are they attached by a plus or minus sign? No. If they're not attached by a plus or minus sign, you can put them in their own brackets. So we're going to have 8 in a bracket and x in a bracket. Okay? Does the 8 get me an NPV? No. The x does. x can't equal 0, and that's my only NPV.
for each of the rational expressions, determine if they're equivalent. How, if I give you two, how can I determine if they're equivalent? What would be a way you think you could do it? Do something to one of them to try and make it be the other, right? If you do something to this one, and you can do it to the top and the bottom the same, and it gets you this one, then they're equivalent. If they're exactly the same in every way, sign, number, everything. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the top two because they're by themselves. If I look down here, I'd have to compare the 3x with the 6x because they're x's, right? More complicated. I'm going to compare these ones. So how could I make the 9 be a negative 18? Multiply by negative 2. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. You're leaving them hanging. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you multiply the top by negative 2, you have to multiply the bottom by negative 2. Because equivalent means same on the top and the bottom, right? So, if I distribute the negative 2 in, I'm going to get negative 18 over negative 2 times 3x, which is negative 6x negative 2 times negative 1, which is positive 2. Now, some people will say, yes, it's equivalent. Some people will say, no, it's not. This one is 2 minus 6x. This one is negative 6x plus 2. Remember, they have to be the same in every way. So number and sign for the number. Okay, let's see. Negative 18, negative 18. That's good. Positive 2, positive 2. So that's good. Negative 6x, negative 6x. So are they the same? Yes. Does it matter that these are the opposite way? No. You have to look at the sign that's in front of the term. And as long as the sign and the term are the same, it's equivalent. So these are equivalent. Let's look at B. 2 minus 2x over 4x and x minus 1 over 2x. So I'm going to try and make the 2x be the 4x. What would I do? I like multiplying better than dividing. 2x to 4x. What are you going to have to do? Multiply by 2. I'm going to take x minus 1 over 2x, and I'm going to multiply by 2. So you get 2x minus 2 over 4x. Are they equivalent? They're not. You're right. Because we have the 4x in the bottom, which is the same, positive 4x, but then we have a positive 2x and a negative 2x. So these aren't. So this is like the number 7 I didn't make you really do. In each case, write a rational expression with a given variable and non-permissible value. So the variable I have to use is an x. The non-permissible value is 3. So that means x can't equal 3. So what would I have had to have had on the denominator in order to get in, in the bottom, in order to get x can't equal 3? Yes. So in the denominator, I'd need an x minus 3. Does it matter what I have in the numerator? No. I'm going to put an x squared, just because I feel like it. I could put 1. I could put 7. I could put negative 5 on the top. It doesn't matter. But the bottom has to have negative 3. Now, this one is a variable of a, non-permissible values of 0 and 4. So 0 would be x can't equal 0, and 4 would be x can't equal 4. What would they be back? This would have to just have an x in the denominator, right? But, I'm sorry, the variable is a, so it's going to be a in the denominator. And how do I get x, or I guess it would be a can't equal 4. How do I get that back? 
What did I do to get it over to here? You added 4 to get over here, so I'm going to have to subtract it to move it back. So a minus 4 can't equal 0. So as long as you get it back to can't equal 0, you can use it. And then I'm going to put a 6 on the top. Okay, let's look at D. Variable m, non-permissible value of negative 8. So we'd have m can't equal negative 8. How could I move it back over? It's a negative 8. Add it. So I get m plus 8. Can't equal 0. That would be my denominator. And what's in my numerator? m? 2m? m squared? 7? Doesn't really matter. 